welcome back. It's February the 1st, and this is our first uh, midweek pastor's moment of the new year. We took a little hiatus, and of course we had a uh, week worth of services in the evening, so it feels good to be back. I know a lot of you rely on this midweek stop-in just to uh, check in with the church, what's happening, and I hope to receive some encouragement as well. Like I said, it's February the 1st, so happy birthday to our son, Mateo. Turns 11 today, so special day in our household. Um, I wanted to uh, to talk about uh, being transformed. You know, the disciples, although they had been warmed multiple times by Jesus, he talked to them uh, many times that he had to go and he had to die, that he was going to be handed over to the Romans and that he was going to be crucified. When that actually happened, they were a little bit disillusioned when he died. What, what did they do after his death and they had taken the body and buried it? We see uh, twice in the Gospels that they were locked away in a room. They were just in a room together with the doors locked, it says, and then Jesus appeared among them twice. And then in the book of John, we have a third appearance of Jesus. So what were they doing at, at, at this time? You know, they had three years of following him, three years of watching and observing his ministry, three years of being called into this new lifestyle, this new profession. Yet, after Jesus died, what did they do? Well, they went back to what they knew. Uh, what had they done? Many of them, they were fishermen. Jesus had called them to leave their nets and their father's business, and so um, they went back fishing. We read this in John Chapter 21, verse 2 to 4. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, that's James and John, and the other two disciples were together. I'm going to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and they got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. They caught nothing. And you know, that's not unusual. I haven't been fishing many times in my life, but Catching nothing, that is a usual occurrence, despite the tall fish tales that many of you have told. The one that got away. Catching nothing, uh, it happens. Um, and so they were, they were uns unsuccessful. Was it because there were no fish? I don't know. Given the miracle that Jesus performs, as if we were to continue to read on, um, it just depends on how you read it. Apparently there were an abundance of fish right outside the boat or miraculous catch. Um, but what they failed to recognize with the disciples, all these men that went out and went fishing, what they failed to recognize was they were no longer the same people that Jesus had once called to leave their nets, who had called from the seashore. And so they couldn't just go back to what they had done before. See, they weren't the same people that they were three years earlier. They had been completely transformed. Jesus had said, you know, come follow me and now I'm going to make you fishers of men. Come follow me and, and your, your life purpose, your trajectory is going to be changed. You're no longer just, this was no longer a group. When we read in John, this wasn't just a group of fishermen having a bad night on the water. I see this as a group of uh, pastors, apostles, evangelists, and teachers. There was a boat full of uh, ministry workers and their fruitfulness was going to be in fulfilling the Great Commission. They had to go to Jerusalem and Samaria and to the ends of the earth preaching the good news and teaching um, people to obey everything Jesus had commanded them to. Not go back to their father's fishing business. They were new creations in Christ. The old is gone and the new had come, the scripture tells us. And so they need to embrace the purpose for which Jesus had called them out of. And, and that's really what we need to do. We need to embrace the purpose to which Jesus had called us. You know, this is a real big contrast to what we see as the calling of Elisha in 1 Kings. It says, so Elijah went from there and he found Elisha, son of Saphat, and he was plowing twelve with 12 yoke of oxen and he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him, threw his cloak around him. This was the, the passing of the mantle, the prophetic mantle of, of leadership. 
It says then that Elisha then left his ox and he ran after Elijah. He said, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye. And he said, then I'll come with you. Go back, Elijah said. What have I done to you? You know, Jesus told his disciples, he said that no one who puts their hand to the plow and then looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. And so Elisha left him. He went back. He took his yoke of oxen. He slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and become his servant. He said, come what may, I'm taking a new path. I'm not going back. I can't go back. There was a great transformation that had occurred. And the transformation that Christ makes in our lives when we come to him is really a metamorphosis. And the idea behind metamorphosis is that it's an irreversible kind of change. It's the same, same kind of change we see when a caterpillar turns into a butterfly. See, you're not the same anymore. You are meant to fly. There's a new beauty that you're called to. And so we can't go back. The Bible calls our lives before we met Christ, calls them empty. It's an empty way of life. Just like the fishing nets that night for Peter, James, John, and the disciples. It's an empty way of life. It leads to nowhere, and our life leads nowhere unless we're following after Christ. And you know what? You may not wake up every day feeling transformed. You know, I look in the mirror every morning. It doesn't feel like a very transformational process has occurred. It takes a little less time to count the number of hairs on my head. Um, you may see a caterpillar still. You may see a fisherman. Uh, but believe me, you have been changed. You've been transformed. Your heart now beats with God's heart. Royal blood runs through your veins. And you have a position, a very high position, in Christ to be his ambassador, to be his representative, to be the member or part of the body of Christ to which Jesus called you to. And the beautiful thing is that even if you don't feel that way, even if you go back, you know, the, the disciples went back, even if you experience the empty nets, Christ still appears to you, Christ still restores you, Christ still speaks to you, and he points you in the right direction. And we see that when the disciples come to the shore and they're hauling this full net of fish, there Jesus is with a breakfast cooked for them. And then he restores Peter. That's what he did. He, he said, you know, they had so many fish, the net couldn't contain it. And then Jesus reminded Peter, he said, if you love me, feed my lambs. If you love me, feed my lambs. Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. Do that which I have called you to do through your life because you're not the same anymore. And I think, church, you can be really encouraged by that word because you may not see it in yourself, but Christ sees it in you and he's encouraged you and he wants to walk with you to see yourself as being transformed and been given new purpose and new direction in your life to live out. And we can live that out each and every day with his help. A couple of announcements for you before I let you go on with your evening. Uh, seniors luncheon is uh, tomorrow. Just a reminder, many of you have already signed up and you're coming monthly. Uh, I want to encourage you, if you've never uh, checked out one of the seniors lunches, you should really sign up as uh, we announce them monthly, the first Thursday of every month. It's a great time uh, to, for people to come together and be encouraged and build community. February the 18th, I'm really excited that we're having a couple's Valentine's dinner. It's a special night. It's a Saturday evening, so all of the hectic, crazy uh, Valentine's chaos will be behind us, but it's a time we get to set aside just to invest in our marriages, to invest in one another. And uh, it's at five o'clock and it's uh, $50 per couple. And you actually have a great number of options for your food choices and you'll get to fill that out once you purchase a ticket. There'll also be opportunity for us to uh, receive a word and be encouraged that night during the program. And uh, it's just our way of really encouraging healthy families and healthy marriages. Uh, Sunday is your last day to sign up for the faith and fun night that's happening um, next month. And you're going to the Oil Kings game. There's an opportunity to skate on the uh, ice afterwards. It's only $20 per ticket on February the 24th at 7 p.m. Uh, you don't have to have youth to be able to do it. It's a family fun thing. You can bring your grandkids, your friends just uh, joining together. See Pastor Carter uh, if you'd like more information about that. 
Uh, also coming up in March, we're beginning our uh, Hearing God seminar again. And uh, the practice of listening for God's voice is something very crucial and important to us at the Park Church. We believe that everybody uh, can hear God's voice speaking to them. And so uh, the Hearing God seminar is just six weeks. And uh, you, can do, you can sign up by going to our website and clicking on the uh, Community Life Groups tab. Uh, during those six weeks, we just learned to how, how God speaks to us through his word, how God speaks to us through his spirit, and how we can really discern and understand what that voice is. And it brings life, uh, not just to your prayer life, but really to your whole day as you just hear and receive from Jesus. So I really encourage you, uh, if you haven't taken the Hearing God seminar before, this is who we are, and I encourage you to sign up, and you can do that online. Finally, on the uh, family day long weekend on the Monday, we have a great family event. It's a paint night or paint day uh, event, and you can find more information about that on our website. Uh, getting our families together and taking advantage of this special day of rest just to do something fun together. Thanks, Park Church, for tuning in tonight. Have a great evening. We'll see you soon.